Hello, welcome back. Let's get started. So what we're going to do next is to project um, financial assets and liabilities and also equity. The key here is to ensure that we have sufficient financing to support the firm's operating and investing activities. The important thing to remember is that in investing and financing activities will have an impact on net income because if we finance, if you use debt financing, you affect uh, future um, interest expense. If you carry a financial asset, that will generate income. For firms that are typical that maintain a uh, relatively stable capital structure over time, uh, a common a common size balance sheet can be used uh, as a projection. So, um, and we learn how to do that, how to compute common size um, income statement as well as balance sheet back uh, in our earlier chapter. So, all these tools we're going to use to help us uh, in forecasting future um, financial statements. On the other hand, if we think that um, the firm plan to change its capital structure, then we can forecast them um, spe specifically based on what the firm's intent is. So if the firm wants to change its leverage strategy, a uh, very common um, thing that firms may do is to repurchase shares and some firms may even borrow money and use that to repurchase uh, outstanding shares. And that is a specific strategy to change the capital structure. If a firm plans to do that, once again, those information will be disclosed in the management discussion and anal analysis section of the annual report. Most analysts commonly forecast gain or losses from other comprehensive income to be zero on average. Uh, so remember that the, uh, an important principle that we want to um, take into account is the earnings consistency and sustainability when we forecast uh, future net income. So um, these other items, um, they are not the core operation of the firm. Um, we assume it is going to zero out on average in the long run because these are uncommon and is unless we have specific information, we would uh, we would we can just ignore them. Once we have forecasted the firm's um, financial financing for the future, we can then um, incorporate that in um, to provision for taxes, taxable income, net income, and uh, dividend. Uh, we can, once we get to taxable income, we can compute provision for income tax based on the firm's current tax rate. Um, whether or not a firm is going to pay dividend depends on the, 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 the nature of the firm and its life cycle. Uh, a firm that is mature and profitable would typically pay um, dividend or repurchase, repurchase shares to distribute excess cash back to shareholders. Um, typically, dividend will change over time, but most companies try to maintain a relatively stable dividend. Some firms will repurchase stock um, and those will become treasury stock. And once again, that will affect uh, their paying capital as well as retained earnings. Usually we can assume that retained earnings will increase um, by the amount of net income and decrease for dividend um, or it will decrease by net losses. So this is um, so the statement of retained earnings um, is relatively simple to forecast. Just like when we are preparing financial statement, when we prepare forecast forecast a financial statement or pro forma financial statements, the biggest challenge is of course balancing the balance sheet. Um, so the difference between our in initial projection in terms of total asset and our initial projection of liability and equity, um, they need to be reconciled. And we use a flexible financial account to, um, to make the balance sheet balance. You can choose um, which variable to use as the flexible financial account. 
Uh, remember, we sometimes call these the PRUC, so basically the balance sheet is not balanced, but we just PRUC it. Um, so we need to evaluate their financial flexibility. So for some company, the financial flexibility may be cash or marketable security. So meaning that if they have too much cash, they will just use that. Um, they can increase or reduce their cash amount. They can pay off liability to balance it. Uh, for others, financial flexibility, maybe they have to borrow money. So, and then for firms that are generating sufficient cash, um, it may use it to pay down debt or pay out dividend or repurchase shares. So all those are ways that a firm can, can use to balance the balance sheet. The best way to illustrate this is through an example. Uh, in, this, in this example, we're going to use dividend as the financial flexible account. So here are the assumptions. So once again, this is gonna, we are gonna do this in Excel. So if you open up Excel, you can copy this variable into it. So here are the assumptions. And our forecast model is very simple. So I encourage you to, um, to pause and, and enter this into your spreadsheet. So this is the information that we are given. Our forecast model is a very simple income statement. So we, have, we were given operating income, so we don't have to compute that. Uh, so we have interest expense, taxable income or income before tax, uh, provision for taxes. Remember that tax rate is 20%. Net income and then retained earning, dividend. Um, addition to retained earnings is net income minus dividends, and then ending retained earnings is retained earning plus addition to retained earnings. So that is our uh, income statement here, and this is our statement of retained earnings. Uh, our balance sheet is extremely simple. We have total assets, so that's just one item. And then we have current liability, long-term liability, and equity. So um, welcome back. I assume you have uh, finished entering all this information into your um, own Excel. So let's go ahead and uh, create this model. So notice how we um, separate the assumption area from the model itself. So operating income uh, were given. And then interest expense. Interest expense is um, our long-term debt times the interest rate. You know, interest rate is 10%. And we can put this as a positive or a negative number depending on how you add it up. So if you want to show expenses as, an, as a negative, we'll put that as negative. And then income before tax will be the sum of these two. And tax provision is equal to income before tax times the tax rate, which is 20%. So once again, if you want to show an expense as negative, we can show that as negative. And net income will just be income before tax plus the tax provision. So we just want to make sure that if you show this as negative, then your equation will be adding this up. If you show this number as positive, then income before tax will be operating income minus interest expense. The two conventions depend on um, your company uh, or the analyst. So again, remember we are doing pro forma income statements. These are projections. These are not gap. These are not, um, there are no auditing. This is for the analyst's um, internal use. Retain earning. We were given the retained earning at the beginning of the year. Dividend, so this is our flexible financial account. In the, uh, at this time, it's zero. We're just going to uh, assume it's zero to start. Addition to retained earning is equal to net income minus dividend. Or we can show dividend as negative to be consistent. And then addition to retained earning will be net income plus negative dividend. 
And then retained earning at the end of the year will be retained earning at the beginning of the year plus addition to retained earnings. And total asset, once again, that's in the assumption. Accrued liability is also in the assumption as is long-term debt and common stock. But retain earnings, retain earning is at the end of the year. So that's what we computed. When we add up the total liability and owner's equity, we'll notice that this is higher than total assets. So we have excess financing. So we need to give that out. So we are gonna, since we are using dividend, um, we know that the difference is $17. So what that means is if you pay out $17, that will reduce our additions to retained earnings, reduce the ending balance of retained earnings, and now our total asset is equal to total liability and shareholders' equity. Uh, if the convention of negative versus positive is confusing to you, I'm going to show you how you can show it as positive as well. So operating income is $58 and interest expense is liability, long-term debt times the interest rate. And then interest income before tax will be operating income minus interest expense. So which convention is more um, intuitive to you? You can use either one as long as you're consistent in creating your formulas. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, instead of using dividend as the flexible financial account, we're going to use long-term debt. Um, dividend is fixed at 25. So a company wants to pay $25 in dividend and you will make up the difference through long-term debt. It is exactly the same company, but instead of um, the fin flexible financial account, instead of being dividend, it's gonna be long-term debt. Currently it is $80. So let's, um, go ahead and create this in Excel. I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and create the Excel um, on your own and check back to see if you get exactly what I have. Do not worry about balancing, yet, balancing the uh, balance sheet yet. Just create the uh, income statement um, and see what you find. Okay, when you fill in the um, income statement, do you get um, the income, which um, does not change in the base case, is $40. And then you, because you're paying out $25 in dividend, your ending retained earnings is, is $49. Um, when you compute the um, balance sheet portion, you will see that total asset, of course, remain unchanged in $200, but because the ending retained earnings is only $49, now your financing is insufficient. You only have $192. So since this is our product, so that means we will need to make this balance. Our current long-term debt is $80, so we need to borrow more. So you would think that, well, we need $8, right? So I will increase our liability from $80 to $88. Unlike dividend, when we increase our liability to $88, we are not quite there. We're very close. We have $199.36. And the reason is because when we increase our long-term debt, our interest expense also go up. So now we have a lower net income and a slightly lower um, retained earnings. So we will need to increase that even further. So we may have to let's try the different decimal places. Um, you can try $89 and you'll notice that that's too much. So maybe we can try $88.50. Uh, still not quite there. So we can, this is the iteration. We keep try, trial and error until we get 
as close as possible is 88.6. That is 0.9. That's probably good enough. Let's make it 88.65. We're getting closer and closer. Um, so we can keep trying. Another option is to use Excel to do the trying for us. In Excel, there under data, under data analysis, there's an option called Solver, and we can set objectives. So let's see what do we want. We want our total liability and shareholders' equity to. We want to set this to. $200 because we know that total asset is $200 by changing by changing our long-term debt so this is the variable we will be changing we can ask Excel to solve for that and it get very close to $200 so once again um, and you say keep the software solution, everything is okay. All right. So that's one strategy you can use to get to a very precise answer. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is I didn't use any rounding in this problem. Uh, if you use rounding, then you may never get to as uh, you may never get to exactly $200 because um, you'll keep changing. But we know that it's somewhere around 88.7, so 88.69. And this is what we mean by you may have to do multiple iteration because as you change debt, you also change interest expense, which in turn in turn affects net income, which then in turn affects uh, retained earnings, and therefore you have to keep uh, $88 is not sufficient. You have to borrow more than $88 to account for the the increase in interest expense. Uh, the Second to last part is to project the statement of cash flow. Um, here are some basic principles that we should be very well aware of now. Increase in assets is a use of cash. Decrease in asset is a source of cash. Increase in liability and equity is a source of cash. And a decrease in liability and equity is a use of cash. Um, Oftentimes, you will create a partial balance sheet, mean, uh, meaning that um, you fill in the operating current asset, operating current liability, as well as long-term asset, um, but then you will omit the cash balance. Um, that is assume, and that is using the statement of cash flow as the proc. So that will be, if you're using cash flow as the proc, that's, this will be the step that you will go through. Uh, you then use the information you have created, you have projected to um, project future cash balance using the statement of cash flow. Um, and then you put the cash balance back into the balance sheet. So again, you need to iterate this process multiple times. The net change in cash is defined as cash flow from operation, net cash flow from operating activities plus cash flow from investing activities, plus cash flows from financing activity. Now let's take a look at what constitutes operating activities and investing activities and uh, financing activities. And of course, the ending cash balance is the beginning cash balance plus the change in cash. Net cash flow from operating activities um, will include net income, plus all the non-cash expenses. So you add back depreciation and amortization. And then you also add back adjustments from the working capital accounts, and it, which are the current accounts, and adjustment from deferred tax and long-term accrued liabilities. So net income will come from the forecasted income statement. Depreciation, once again, will be is from the forecasted income statement and should be consistent with any uh, planned investment in uh, fixed assets. Uh, same thing, amortization expense is associated with intangible assets. Um, 
Working capital account will include changes in current liabilities and current asset, um, except cash. So this is very important. Do not include that. Do not include cash. Um, remember that deferred tax, defer tax and long-term accrued liabilities are also part of operating activities. So we'll need to take the changes into that into account. And this will give you net cash flow from operating activities. Uh, cash flow from investing activities um, include changes in plant property and equipment. Um, so this will be outflow for any investment um, and inflow will be um, sales. Other investing activity will include a lease. So again, this will capture the asset side. Um, goodwill, this will uh, occur if there are planned purchases of other um, other businesses. So this typically goodwill is created um, when there are acquisitions. Other types of assets include trademarked and other intangible assets, so such as trademark and patents, um, and then change in other non-current assets. So just base, just make sure that all the assets are included in investing activities. For financing activities, um, it will include changes in short-term and long-term debt. Uh, so these are um, the include uh, interest-bearing accounts, even short-term notes uh, and current maturity, and also interest expense of long-term debt. Um, lease. So remember, we have uh, the asset side for lease or right of use asset. We also have the long-term operating liability for lease. If there is changes in um, common stock, uh, so that may include share repurchase. Um, again, for an analyst, a lot of times this typically is uh, do not change. Um, and dividend and share repurchase, this is the most common activity. So for financing activity, um, changes in short-term and long-term debt, changes in lease, those are very common. Changes in dividends and share repurchase are very common. Changes in common stock and accumulated other comprehensive income are very rare. So this concludes the um, forecasting of statement of cash flows. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at applying all these techniques to perform um, financial statement forecasting. See you soon.